What's going on, everybody? Welcome in the Vikings now. My name is Patrick Seatman. I'll be your host for today's show. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the drama queen himself, Stefan Diggs. As yesterday, he did not show up to Bill's mandatory minicamp. So we're going to be kind of diving into the whole Stefan Diggs drama, kind of comparing him and Justin Jefferson a little bit, kind of looking back on that trade where it looked to be the most even trade in NFL history, but I think maybe the Vikings got the better end of the deal there. But guys, before we get into it, we actually just declared battle on our Falcons Today channel. Nick Roloff, the owner of the Falcons Today channel here at Chat Sports, he said they're coming and he's not lying. They are almost about 150 subs away from catching us. If you guys haven't already, help me out here. I don't want to lose this battle. Let's beat them to 13,000 subscribers. Just go down there, quick, easy way. Just hit that sub button. But it was reported by Adam Schefter yesterday. He was the one that uh, broke the news, and he started off with this tweet. He said, Bill's head coach, Sean McDermott, told reporters today that he is very concerned that Stefan Diggs is not at Buffalo's mandatory minicamp. So kind of with that old situation, it's like if Diggs showed up and maybe he let Sean McDermott know ahead of time, like, hey, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be dealing with something else real quick. I'm still going to be working out and everything. Just no worries about it. But if it kind of seems like Sean McDermott was kind of caught off guard that Diggs wasn't there. Then he followed it up with this. Stefan Diggs' agent, Addisa Bakari, said his client is in Buffalo, has been in Buffalo since yesterday morning, took his physical, met with the head coach and GM the past two days, and the Pro Bowl wide receiver said, we'll be there for the entirety of minicamp, which isn't true. But also, side note, Diggs did show up today when we were recording this on Wednesday to Buffalo or to the Bills mandatory minicamp. And then Field Yates broke this down even further. He said, in most cases of players missing out on mandatory minicamp, the motivation is financially driven. Stefan Diggs signed a four year, $96 million extension last season, putting him in line with top paid receivers. Fascinating situation to, mo to monitor in Buffalo. And I totally agree. And it's just kind of this meme that has been tossed around. It's the ah shit. Here we go again. And this whole situation just kind of makes me laugh because what is Stefan Diggs necessarily upset about? Like, I feel like just with Diggs and just kind of his personality, and obviously we know him from his time in Minnesota, it's just like, I just feel like he's never satisfied. And in a situation where he should be satisfied, like he's getting targets and he's getting all these, uh, he's getting paid and everything. He's got a great quarterback in Josh Allen. But just this whole situation makes me laugh because Diggs is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I mean, his past four seasons, ridiculous. I mean, truly, truly ridiculous. I mean, his last season in Minnesota, 2019, he played 15 games and he was in over the top deep threat at its finest. I mean, 63 receptions, 1,130 yards, and damn near 18 yards a catch. And then his time in Buffalo, I mean, over 1,200 yards every single season. He's really the catalyst and really the focal point of that offense. And he's been great. Like, he has been a top five receiver in the NFL probably the last five years. He's a great route runner. We know Diggs, super slippery guy. I don't know. It just kind of gets to the point where it's like, what is he upset about? Because we look at what he has. Like, he has the stud quarterback in Josh Allen. Like, what receiver wouldn't want to play with Josh Allen? He gets a ton of targets. He's led the league in targets the past three seasons. It seems like Buffalo's got a good culture. Like, it seems like every player that plays with the Buffalo Bills, they love playing there, and they just love the city and love what it's about. And then also, you're a Super Bowl favorite every single year with Josh Allen. Like, the Bills, no matter what it is, they'll be a top five Super Bowl favorite, according to Vegas, every single year and they've been like that the past three seasons and then also he got paid he's got 70 million guaranteed dollars over the next three seasons on his contract like all of these reasons it kind of just makes me kind of sit back and just be like what is he upset about and with Stefan Diggs the drama never ends I mean this was the photo of him throwing his hands up at Josh Allen like kind of just a, a total look at me move by Diggs and this is just listen he's a tremendous talent He's a very emotional football player. We know his personality. But the fact that you're going to show your quarterback up like this after losing to the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs, like he knows the cameras are on him. Like I don't want this to kind of be like, oh, like he's not making it about himself. Like, no, he knows the cameras on him, and he's going up to Josh Allen, giving him one of these. Like, I that's just kind of been the reason why I just have never been the biggest fan of Stefan Diggs. And I am a big fan of Justin Jefferson 
our receiver who we got for Stephon Diggs. And I'll make this the pin comment on today's video. I expect to see a lot of JJs in the comment section. Who's the better wide receiver? Justin Jefferson, type JJ. Stephon Diggs, type SD. YouTube would throw you an ad break your way right now. Sit back, let it play, and answer who's the better wide receiver. Overall, the Vikings won the trade. I, I understand this has been the notion uh, or kind of the narrative around the Diggs-Jefferson uh, trade was like, oh, it was the most even trade in NFL history. It was looking like it for a little bit. Like the Vikings got their stud young receiver to kind of replace him, and the Bills got that kind of piece to take them to the next level. And, yes, Stephon Diggs do that, but no Super Bowl appearances, and then the drama just kind of happens again. I bet you if the Bills could go back and you know pick a wide receiver, whether it's Jefferson or Diggs, I guarantee you they would take Justin Jefferson just because of money and the drama that comes along with Mr. Stefan. But we're talking about his time, last three years in Buffalo from where Jefferson entered the league and then obviously Diggs was shipped to the Bills. Stefan Diggs at 2020 season, 1,500 yards. But Jefferson, his rookie year, he was right behind him at 1,400 yards. And then the next season, 2021, this is where we kind of saw Jefferson separate himself from Stefan Diggs a little bit. Obviously, Cooper Cup just – just ridiculous what Cooper Cup. Honestly, side note real quick. Cooper Cup's last season last year was probably the best season by a wide receiver in NFL history. I mean, he almost won Super Bowl MVP. He finished the season with over 2,200 yards, including the playoffs. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. But obviously, focusing on Jefferson here, 1,600 yards from him last season. And then this past year, in 2022, he dominated. Like, Jefferson was the best weapon in the NFL. Probably him or Kelsey. I mean, you can either debate it either way. But 1,800 yards, sat out the last week of the season. Like, Justin Jefferson overall, what he's done in his first three years, it just fires me up. And he's handled it perfectly. And also, another side note here, Jefferson showed up to camp. No drama, and he's still on his rookie deal. It just kind of speaks to the point that we've been making of Diggs comes with the drama and money. And Jefferson, no drama, and he's still not even paid. And he still hasn't gotten paid yet, but he's still showing up, kind of being the good teammate, good leader that he is. But next, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about could the Vikings possibly be bringing Stefan Diggs back. They're not. Just want to put that out there. But I think it will be fun to talk about. And I mainly, I just want to get kind of your thoughts on this. Would you welcome Stefan Diggs back to the Minnesota Vikings? Give me a Y for yes and for no. Welcome him back. I, you know, I'd probably welcome him back. But would I want him back? Eh, probably, probably not. But overall, I think it would be incredibly interesting and this would be something. I mean, obviously, he's the man who had my favorite play in Minnesota Vikings history. I'm sorry, Trace. I just realized you're producing this, and that's my fault. Trace is a Saints fan. But this is my favorite play in NFL history. I mean, it was one of the coolest moments I have ever experienced. Like, I thought the Vikings just blew whatever it was, like a 20-0 lead at half or 17-0 lead at half. And it was going to be complete shambles mode. And then Diggs pulled off one of the greatest plays we have ever seen. But in terms of him coming to Minnesota in the modern day, they're fine. The Vikings wide receiver room is stacked. Like Jefferson, can't say enough about him. Best wide receiver in the NFL. But Jordan Addison, like I am so excited to watch him play and just kind of be that complimentary piece next to Justin Jefferson. Like we all know Addison, route running, like slippery dude, like whatever it is, getting in and out of uh, cuts, routes, whatever. Like he is that guy. Then KJ Osborne, a really solid wide receiver three. And it's funny, when I was kind of doing my pre-draft process, I threw out the Stefan Diggs comparison for Jordan Addison. So it's just kind of funny looking back on this whole little thing here of, you know, Jefferson and Diggs, you know, could they uh, reunite? Probably not. But overall, I do think the Vikings are good at receiver. Like I was saying, you have the best wide receiver in the league. You have Jordan Addison. Like you spent that 23rd overall pick on him. Would the Vikings even entertain this idea of bringing back Stefan Diggs? No, I feel like this was a thing. Kwesi, uh, he was kind of sitting up in his office and he saw this Stefan Diggs report and he was probably like, oh, that's entertaining. That's it. Like, kind of ignored it. So, I don't know. The Vikings are good at wide receiver. Obviously, KJ being a stud wide receiver three as well helps also. But grade the Vikings wide receiver room. Give it a Madden style of grade. Scale 1 through 99. Top of my head, I'd probably give them a probably give them an 80, 88. I'll give them an 88. Sol solid 88 as of right now. Obviously, if Jordan Addison... uh. Uh, you know, improves, it could be up to a 95, 96, whatever it may be. But grade it, 1 through 99 down in the comments section. As always, thank you guys so much for watching today's show. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Any news rumors around the Vikes will keep you posted all year long. All year long. Long, excuse me. But anyways, see you guys next time. Skull Vikes.